I want to introduce you to Photoshop. This is going to be some very simple stuff, uh, but also some very practical information. Um, so I'm assuming that you've never really touched Photoshop before, and it's kind of intimidating because there's lots of buttons and it's a little bit more complicated than Word. But you can see I've got one file open at the moment. To do that, you just go File, Open, and I have this file on my desktop. I just click Open. Now, this image right here uh, is a free image that I got off the web. Um, it's copyright free, and uh, we can do whatever we want to this. So the first thing that I want to try is show you around some of the, the buttons up at the top. Under Image, it has lots of different things that you can do, including one called Canvas Size. Now, this is effectively the crop button. You can use this to resize the image. Actually, you're going to cut off parts of the image. So the first thing I'm going to do is make my image 600 pixels by 70 pixels. Now, I do believe that the first time you run Photoshop, everything would be set to inches. This will be bad. Inches are much, much larger than pixels. Make sure that you change it to pixels first. This little tic-tac-toe grid is where it will keep the uh, information. So right now it's going to keep the stuff a little 600 by 70 from the center of the image. It's going to crop off the rest around it. But I can keep it from the top or the bottom or any place else. When you click OK, you may get a warning about it cropping off the uh, uh, some of the some of the image. Now this image is really tiny. Um, it's supposed to be 600 pixels wide, and the ruler up here is saying that, but it's actually not quite. If you look in the tab across the top, you'll see the zoom level expressed as a percent. So right now I'm zoomed into 50%. The view menu has all the different zoom levels. The one you'll probably want to memorize is Control 1, and that'll give you 100% effectively, actual pixels. Okay, now we need to drop in some text. So there actually is a text tool down the left hand side. You'll see all of these different tools. When you click on any of the tools, the control bar across the top will change to give you the options for that particular tool. Now the text button is pretty simple. You simply click once, don't drag, just click, and you can start typing. Now the text is really big, but I can change that soon. Now, obviously, you can see my text is way off the, the screen. I can't really manipulate it. I can't even see it. So the way to fix that is I need to highlight all of the text. Look over in your Layers panel. It should be over in the bottom right. If you don't see it, it's under Window. And it even has its own keyboard shortcut, the F7 button. That'll turn it on and off. And then I'll hit F7. There you go. You see that there are two layers stacked in here. There's the background layer. If you hit the little eyeball, you can turn it off. It doesn't delete it, it just uh, makes it invisible for a few seconds. Then there's the text layer. And these are two independent objects that I can manipulate um, without touching the other one. And that's really the, the cool thing that Photoshop lets you do is all this um, layer stuff. So now I need to highlight this text and make a change to it. The quickest way to do that is actually to double click on this little T icon. And then you're going to get all the text options. So I'm going I'm to change this to high tower text and 72 point is a little bit large uh, 24 point it's showing up on the yeah that's a good size now you may have seen I just went and grabbed the what's called the move tool I can click on that and whatever layer I have selected I can pick up and move around um, with this tool selected I can even use the arrows on the keyboard to move it in very very tiny increments I'm thinking that this is still a little bit small so I'm going to highlight it and increase it to 30 pixels and move it around again. Ah, that's Now it's too big. So let's see. You are allowed to actually type in numbers instead of just choosing them. So I'll just move that down to 26. There we go. That fits in the, the space a little bit better. Some of the other things that you're allowed to do with this text is um, you can you can change the font if they have bold italicized they'll be listed under the submenu font size left center right justify that one's pretty simple and this one is allows you to choose the color now I believe by default most fonts come in as black but you can come in here and change to any color that you want and if you want pure white which is all F's down here in the hex code 
you have to click and drag and go beyond the upper left corner, but it won't go, it can't get any whiter than white. But this way you're not just barely missing it and getting something that's close to white, but not white. I'm going to click OK. And the other thing I want to do to make this text jump off the background is to give it a drop shadow. And you see this, there's a little FX button down the bottom of the layers panel. It will be applied to whichever layer you currently have selected, which is my text layer. So I'm going to click FX, and there's a whole bunch of different ones, and you can go play with them if you want. Uh, but I'm going to click drop shadow, and this window will actually put a little shadow behind everything. Now you can control all kinds of things, like how far away it is. You can see it moving in the background. Um, the size, this will make it less fuzzy. Um, and you can even control the opacity. You've got all these different things that you can do. I'm going to keep this fairly close. The default settings for this are also just fine, but I just want you to know you have a lot of control, and you can play with these sliders and do whatever you like. So now that I've got this, um, these images, or this image done, I need to save so that I've got something to work with. Um, I'm going to go to File, Save As, and on my desktop, uh, this is a horrible name, so I'm going to call this navbar.psd. Now the PSD file that's sitting on my desktop, um, it's probably not going to look like this on your computer, uh, but I have a, a Photoshop viewer. This has all of the layers intact. You can come back in and all of these layers will be there, but you can't put PSD files in your web pages. That doesn't work. They need to be uh, JPEGs or GIFs or PNG files. And Photoshop will do this for us. It will actually convert it to any file type we want. But the other problem comes in, this is going to be a navigation bar, which means I need to be able to click on Home and go to the Home page. I need to be able to click on Links and go to the Links page. Well, something bad is going to happen. I can't really make these different areas of the image clickable. Um, that's not entirely true. There are ways to do it. But beginning, I don't want you to get into those. What we'll end up having to do is to try and crop this so that just this is an image, just around the home button. And then we have a separate image for links, and a separate image for news, and one for contact us. And Photoshop does this with the slice tools. They're located in the under the crop tool, and you can see that I access this by clicking and holding down on the mouse. In fact, any of these buttons that have a tiny little black arrow in the lower right corner, that means that they have more tools under them. So I'm going to grab the slice tool. And what this tool lets me do is draw boxes like this. There we go. Now we'll be able to do another step later where Photoshop will turn this into its own separate image. But for now, I need to go through and make the rest of these slices. And you'll see that they snap pretty close to uh, the existing slices. When you get to the very last one, you can actually cheat. You can right click and promote it to a user slice and you don't need to uh, draw it in by hand. Now, once you have the slices in, you have to use the slice select tool to manipulate them. The little exacto knife without the black arrow, that's for drawing them in. The slice select tool is for manipulating them once they're down on the page. Now, I've done something, made a nice little mistake that can definitely you can definitely make easily. The, you can see that I missed. There's a tiny little gap, but do you see the numbering in the upper left-hand corner of each slice? If you end up with an extra one, you can click on a slice and you can drag it around so that you can manipulate its dimensions after they're on the page. Okay, Photoshop, the last thing that we need to do before we save this out is I need to name each of these slices. With the Slice Select tool, you can double click on a slice. And whatever you put here as the name, that's what the file will end up being. So I'm going to call this Home and click OK. So this one will be Home. Now I need to do the same to Links. Links and News. And the last one's going to be Contact Us. Now I'm going to put a dash in between contact and us. In file names, if you need a space, dashes are what you should use instead. Click OK. Good. Before I actually save these out as um, my web files, 
I'm going to save it again as my PSD. Right now it doesn't know about the web files I need. It's just saving it as a Photoshop document. To get those JPEGs or GIFs, I need to go to File, then Save for Web. In older versions of Photoshop, this was called Save for Web and Devices, but it was the exact same thing. So now I can independently control the JPEG or GIF compression on each one of these slices. Or you can drag a box that touches all of them, and we can change them all at once. Now I'm going to start with a preset. I'm actually going to start with JPEG Low. And you can see that this gives me JPEG options. I've got the quality slider. That's where you're actually going to start saving, uh, worrying about file space. There's a little drop down here, and I can set the quality to 100%. And what you'll notice is down in the lower left corner, it will give you the eventual file size. Altogether, these will be 44 kilobytes at 100%. If I change that back down to 10, where it was when I started, I'm at 5 kilobytes. But let's look closely. Actually, I'll make it even worse. I'll make it down to zero. You can see these giant squares and all the noise that's happening around the text. This is pretty common for JPEG. You can usually stay just under 50% and it'll look okay, or just around 50%. Zoomed out doesn't look too bad. Not too many people are going to look at your images this closely. But this, I could live with this. And it's only 11 kilobytes. So I'm going to stick with JPEG for now. Click Save. And on my desktop, this is where it's going to save the files. Now, it may say navbar.png. It's actually going to use the names that you typed in to each individual slice. The only thing that I ask that you change is change it is make sure the format is set to images only. Dream, or Photoshop will actually create an HTML file for you, but you're not going to want it in this instance. I'm going to save this on my desktop. And when I'm back here, I want to save this one more time. This will save the Photoshop document. It'll save all of the settings that you just put under Save for Web. So what did it do? Well, there's my Photoshop file. There's my original JPEG, and here's the new folder. If I click inside there, you can see that there's four images. Look at that. It's exactly what we sliced up. I can zoom in on those. Excellent. Now, I could actually go in and drop these into an HTML document and have a lot of control over them. If at any time you ever need to make changes, for example, let's say it was no longer contact us. We actually wanted it to be contact always come back and open up the original Photoshop file and make your changes there. I'll save for the web. Um, all of these options will still be the same as before. I'll click save and it's going to overwrite them. These will be identical but contact us will be new. I'll click replace. There we go. I don't know if you saw it. It might have been there for a split second, but contact the us disappeared as this file was updated. So there you go. That's how to create, uh, use slices and create some very simple effects in Photoshop.